Okay, here's the tools. You've seen all of these before. Of course, I'm going to use R because it can help me with normal distributions, and we're certainly talking about normal distributions in this problem. We're going to use these three distribution distributions, or at least possibly, the distribu the the distribution of the population, the distribution of the sample means, and uh, a normalized uh, either a t distribution or a or a z distribution down here. Okay, so let's look at the problem. Uh, the scores of students in an SAT college entrance exam on a certain high school had a normal distribution. That's a population mean. So I'm looking at, at this distribution. And they're telling me that the mean of that entire population is 530.9. 530.9. Point nine. Not only that, because they knew all of the scores of the entire population, they know that the standard deviation is equal to uh, 29. Okay. So here we've got a normal distribution, a mean of 530.9, and a standard deviation of 29. And what they're going to ask us is, what is the probability that a single student randomly selected from all of those scores has a test score of 537 or higher? Okay, so where is that? 537 would be up here a little bit, wouldn't it? It'd be above the mean. Okay, if I can draw this. Okay, and we want to know this area right here. Okay. Well, we've got tools that do exactly that job. Let me uh, make this a little smaller. Okay. So we know things that do exactly that job. We could find... Oh, what did I do there? Let me refine that picture because we want to talk about it. Okay, there it is. Okay, what we want to do, let me use this color. We could easily find this light blue area back here. Okay, because we can just use the Q norm, uh, I'm sorry, the P norm, because we're looking for a probability of uh, 530.9 in a mean of 530, oh, I'm sorry, this was uh, 537, right? Okay, because uh, this, this number right here, I should have marked that so it was a little clearer. This number right here is 5, 37 or above. Okay, that's what we're looking at. <clears throat> so I could find this blue area down below there real, real easily by looking at 537 in a normal distribution that has a mean of uh, 530.9 and a standard deviation of 29. Okay, now that's the wrong answer because it's the blue area. What I want is that red area, and the total area under the curve is 1, so 1 minus that particular amount, zingo, is going to be that amount right there. Okay? So let's copy that. It's going to be less than a half, isn't it? That makes sense, because if it was above 530, it would be more than a half. So let's copy that, and we'll put that right in there. Uh, oh, shoot, I didn't copy it right. Let's uh, copy that and put that right there. And you can check your answers. Voila. Okay. Of course, that's correct. Okay. So let's work our way a little bit further along. What's the mean and standard deviation of the sample mean scores X bar of 25 students? Okay. That means that we need to come to our other tool. This one right here. See? N is going to be 25. And so we want to know the, the uh, mean of this sampling distribution. 
Well, it's going to be the same as this mean. So that number right there is going to be the, the same as the population mean. Okay, it's a matter of, of knowing these three distributions. Now it's going to ask us, uh, uh, does it ask for a standard deviation over there? It, it doesn't. They could have asked us for the standard error, which we could have found as 29 divided by the square root of 25 because our sample size is 25 here. Now we want to know what's the z score corresponding to a mean score of 527. Okay, so we're looking at this 527 up here. Okay, and we want to convert that down here to a z score. And we know how to do that. We take, uh, let me grab my pen here and I'll, I'll write this out. We'll take our, our 5, 37, minus this mean, which we happen to know is the same as this mean, 530.9, divided by the standard deviation of this distribution. That standard deviation is going to be, it's called the standard error usually, uh, 29 divided by the square root of n. Remember our sample size here is 25. Okay. So we can, so, so that's the z-score. That's, that's how we're going about uh, finding this z-score. Okay, this thing right here is a z-score. Now, if we had been using a sample distribution instead of the a sample standard deviation, instead of a population standard deviation, then this would have been a t-score instead. But uh, there, so that z-score is going to be easy to find. Now, I've showed you how to do that. You can do that uh, here which is going to be something divided by something. The stuff we're dividing by is, is 29 um, divided by the square root of something. Notice that when I, when I use the software, I always put the start and the end of parentheses together so that I don't lose track of stuff. I don't lose, I don't lose track of the parentheses. 530.9 Zingle. That's going to be the z-score that we're looking for right there. Okay. That z-score. See, look, look at look at where the stuff is, and you can see that that z-score is not going to be a. Uh, well, the the z-score is going to be up here. <laughs> uh, a ways, and and we found what that is. We can can check that amount if we feel like we need to. There's the z score. Control V and check our answer. Okay. What's the probability that the x bar of those students is 527 or above? Okay. So it's the we're looking at the mean. So so now we're we're looking at at this area up here. See, this is 527. Uh, if, uh, I'm sorry, this was 537, just like this one over here was 537. But this area is going to be quite a bit less than, uh, than, than this one was, because we're looking at a sample of size 25, okay? And so we're going to need to use this mean and and this standard deviation, or we could be doing that down here. We could be looking at that z score that we got. There's the z that we got from this calculation, and we just need to find this area. And so the mean now is zero, and the standard deviation is one. So this particular value right here can be found in the following way. It's going to be uh, one minus a p norm. Let me pull this up where it's a little bit more viewable. 
a p norm of uh, uh, we found uh, shoot did I find that z value somewhere I did it was right there okay so I can just uh, copy that and paste that in there okay uh, in a mean equal to zero and the standard deviation equal to equal to one oops <laughs> uh, what did we do wrong here uh, minus uh, one minus the p oh I've got too many parentheses on there okay so there we go Okay, see, you knew all of those tools, didn't you? Those, those were the, ooh, that's the wrong amount. Let's go back there and see. Yeah, I needed to clear this out. It pasted more than in there than I wanted. Control V, and I can check the answer. Okay, see, you knew all of those tools. The tools were a matter of using R, and uh, those three distributions, just a matter of looking at those issues.